guys, Doug from Pine Tree Lane Outdoors. I want to introduce you today to um, a good friend of mine, Kelly Barbosa. Uh, she is an amazing young artist uh, right here in the Sudbury area, northern Ontario. She does incredible work and I want to feature her because most and much of her inspiration comes from the outdoors and her experiences in the outdoors, her experiences with her dad in the outdoors and I just think this is a an amazing artist, amazing up and coming artist who I really think you want to meet. She's fantastic. Her work is out of this world amazing. Uh, stick around, have a look. You won't be disappointed. Probably around the age of eight or nine, you know, that age where you kind of start scribbling doesn't really make sense yet, but I knew that I enjoyed it. Um, and my dad really helped with that. So. You know, he would always draw and stuff. He was actually an, an inventor kind of guy. So his drawing sort of attracted me to drawing too. And uh, yeah, it just blossomed from there. I think at that age, it's more the imagination that helps with that um, before the skill develops. Um, because there's definitely a, a practice element to it. Um, things didn't make sense, but in my mind they did. So the imaginary sense of it took over there. Um, but it wasn't for a while. I, had to draw for a few years for before it looked any you know remarkable in any sense so yeah still times where my imagination has a much bigger and much more exciting idea than what I could actually physically do for a long time I thought just hobby um, even through high school and stuff I'm like yeah this art is my hobby it's just something I do while I'm in school or eventually when I move on to other educational things um, College is what made me sort of change that sort of mindset about it um, because now at this point I can decide that it's something I can take further than a hobby uh, which is obviously what I had ended up doing so at this point in my life um, it's more than a hobby uh, I take it a lot more seriously I really care about my specific craft more than I used to so when I was a kid we would do everything nature I loved it we went camping every year at Oastler Lake. It was my favorite place to be every summer. Um, everything was spent outside, oh my gosh. All playing outside and stuff, you know, that generation, of course, we, we were the last to just spend literally every minute outside of school, outside, and it was great. Um, building teepees, just playing in the bush, that was my thing. Um, other than that, though, I, I played video games pretty intensely as well. So those were my two things for sure, just nature and video games, the two opposites. <laughs> Definitely the animals, they affect basically all of my subject matter. Um, you know, I know my focus is mainly oceanic and there is a reason for that. The ocean is by far my favorite thing. Um, but you know, and you've seen it yourself, I love reptiles, I love amphibians, I like drawing any animal that comes to mind that I can think of. I love learning about them and then when I learn about them I apply that to my craft and uh, yeah just animal everything. They had so much influence on my work it's almost my daily subject matter. Just anywhere being outside honestly I, I feel great even right now I'm like yes I'm ready to go let's do this. So we're here today because uh, I've been selected to work on an electrical box downtown uh, for the Up Here Festival Power Up project. Um, I was selected by uh, doing a process. It gave them my sketches, my designs, my uh, visions for what I wanted this box to look like and uh, they approved of it. So happily I, uh, I've been granted access to an electrical box to uh, work on it and create my own design, leave my own mark in the city. Very excited to be here for it. So the idea uh, usually goes immediately to paper. Um, we as artists are trained, uh, especially in school, to do thumbnailing. Um, that's something super important to getting your ideas out. Um, it lets you do trials of your ideas. So even if you have the one solid idea, uh, you gotta draw it like five or six times before you really know what your like focus is. And uh, so that's our basic process. Um, from there, we could either move on to preliminary sketches or just move right into it. Um, just because my work is the MDF, I have a little bit of freedom to be messy. Um, so I usually jump straight from thumbnail to right onto my boards. Uh, once I figure out my sizing and stuff, um, that's more of just like a personal on the whim thing. I'll measure out a thing and be like, yeah, that's a cool size. Um, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll move on from there and just start completing the process. But thumbnails is definitely where you want to be. 
obviously downtown is the art hub of the city. That's what people are pushing for. Um, so this sort of adds to that as well as, you know, exactly what you said, like beautifying downtown a bit more. Um, you know, it discourages people from, you know, graffitiing things, um, just making it a better place to be. As I mentioned, the whole inventor thing, just him drawing all the time really uh, affected the way that I drew things and I draw things now. Um, but whipping back to modern day stuff, you know, I have some close friends of mine. Uh, my buddy Sarah, she influences me with her fantastic line work. Um, she does crazy clean lines. Uh, just that alone is enough to, to get me wanting to draw and stuff. Um, you know, the things that we discussed before, like nature, the ocean, things like that will inspire me. I'm sure other artists would understand this, but almost anything could be inspiring as long as you just get that sort of aha moment from it. Uh, you know, it could be a movie that I watch or a music that I'm listening to at the time or just something I see and I'm like, I gotta draw that like right now. Um, video games, definitely. I make a lot of fan art of video games that I like, Dark Souls in particular. Um, and then as far as like movies and stuff go, like Disney movies and stuff like that, you know, just seeing the way that it was hand drawn or animated, it just gets my gears going and I'm like, ah, well now I want to draw. So definitely those things, maybe popular culture as a whole will definitely influence that and everyday inspiration for sure. Everyone has a chance. As long as you are focused and develop your skills and, and you, you have that passion to be an artist, you can absolutely do it now. And I'm so comfortable with saying that I can be a successful artist now. My favorite type of artwork is uh, actually um, the MDF carvings. Um, it's so unique, it's so fresh, it's exciting to do. Um, my process is very unique in, in terms of uh, being in Sudbury. I've actually heard that from multiple people, they've just never seen anything like it. And uh, essentially what I do, is I figure out what I want to make first, obviously. Um, then I take some a sheet of MDF. Um, depending on whether I want it to be confined within, you know, a canvas sort of style or freestyle, uh, I will then cut it out using a saw. Um, and then I draw my design on uh, as I normally would. You know, I just go over it with pencil, really easy stuff. Then I go over it again with marker to make sure that I'm not cutting out where I don't want to. Um, and then essentially, yeah, that's uh, just it. I use a lino cutter, which is usually meant for lino blocking, uh, which is a printmaking process. Um, and essentially, it, it is almost the same process. Not entirely, right at the end is where it, it changes from that. Um, but you use the tools the same way. You're just boring out every area that you don't want to have black ink on. Um, and then that's where it changes. I paint into the areas that we would normally just leave out fully, um, making it you know, come to life essentially. And then once I'm finished with that, I will go over it with the, the same ink that you would use for a lino cut process, and that would be the completing process. That's where all the line work comes through, and it's so exciting. I love doing it, and I'll never stop, <laughs> even if it tires me out sometimes. It just blossomed from there. I, as soon as I started doing it, I did the first one was a little fan art piece of a Majora's Mask 
from uh, Legend of Zelda. And uh, man, it was so awesome. Super vibrant, super bold lines, and somehow still looked exactly how I would draw it. And uh, it, yeah, just blossomed. It was crazy.